Hello, I'm Kate Hamilton, Director of Alumni Relations, and I will serve as your host tonight. Please look for the Q&A chat box and use that to submit any questions you may have for Coach Cohn. My colleague, Sarah Kranko, Director of Career Services, will act as moderator and will compile the questions for Coach. At this time, I would like to introduce Siena Heights head football coach, Matt Cohn. Coach, take it away. Thanks a lot, Kate. And I uh, want to give a special thank you to uh, not only yourself, Kate, but Sarah Cranko and Career Services, Sam for working out all this, the technical aspects of this presentation, and uh, our good friends Doug and Liesl in marketing for, for helping with this process. Um, this is a, a really awesome opportunity for me uh, to, to have this half hour period to talk with everyone a little bit about Siena Heights football. Uh, Kate reached out to me uh, about a week ago and, and ran this idea by me and I, I just jumped at the idea. I couldn't respond to the email fast enough. Uh, and then she told me, coach, can you keep it under 30 minutes? And uh, that's gonna be a challenge, uh, but I'm gonna do my best. Um, you know, we have 98 young men returning on our football team. We've got another incoming 44. Um, and I could be up here for hours talking about each one of those guys. But um, for the interest of time, let's get rolling a little bit here, all right? Our program was established in 2011. Uh, the gentleman right there in the middle holding the football was Sister Peg. Uh, Sister Peg, our president, was our first head football coach ever. Uh, a mentor of mine, Coach Jim Lyle, started the program in 2011. Uh, we've got a couple throwback picks down at the bottom um, of some guys that are, are still coaching on our staff right now. Some guys that have been with the program for a long time. You see in the bottom left hand corner is a picture of Coach Ron Shields. He's our current defensive coordinator. Um, I'm right next to him to about 10 years younger in that picture. Um, Ron and I served as co-defensive coordinators in year one. Uh, Ron left the program, coached at other places and now has returned. And I'll talk a little bit more about our defense later on. Over on the right hand side, you've got Rob Thornblade. And in 2011, Rob was just a volunteer assistant coach. Um, he wasn't, didn't get paid anything to coach in, in that year. He then went on and became a graduate assistant and is now our assistant head football coach. On the far right is coach Jim Hamilton. Jim has, has really coached almost every position on our football team since 2011. He's worked with the offensive line. He's worked with our tight ends. Um, him and Rob together right now run our special teams, coordinate our special teams, and, and they do a phenomenal job at it. And Coach Hamilton currently works with our kickers and punters. So established in 2011, that first year we recruited 160 young men to Siena Heights University. All right. Um, the reason why football came to Siena Heights certainly wasn't because that lady there in the middle uh, needed something to do on Saturday afternoons. All right. Um, Sister Peg is a huge fan of football, but the program was created so that 160 young men could be more in line with the mission of Siena Heights to make them more competent, purposeful, and ethical. Um, and that's what we've tried to do since we've started the program in 2011. We play in the best NAI conference in the entire country. The Mid-States Football Association has seven teams on the east side and seven teams on the west side. Um, you got a map right there. It kind of shows you the geographical region that we'll play our games, that we have played our games. Uh, a really cool stat about our conference is someone from our conference has played in the national championship game eight of the last nine years. That's just a crazy stat. Um, of those eight of nine years, someone from our conference has won the national championship seven of the last nine years. So it is the best in, in the country. The data proves that. Um, it's really cool to have an opportunity to prepare week in and week out to play against some of the best competition in the country for our level of football. You know, we tell young men throughout the recruiting process that should you decide to make Siena Heights your, your home, you will have an opportunity to play in games of national significance. And that happens and that will continue to happen. In 2014, uh, we were able to, to win that league. We were champs of that league, Mid-States East. Um, you got a picture there of the championship ring that every coach, every player, and every trainer received at the end of that year. Uh, just an awesome, awesome memory that I had the opportunity to be a part of, as did many others. 
our current staff here. Uh, I'm going to talk about these guys individually, starting in the upper left-hand corner. We have Rob Thornblade. You saw an earlier picture of him um, 10 years ago. He's currently our assistant head coach. He's our special teams coordinator. Him and Coach Hamilton work together to coordinate our special teams, and he also coaches our linebackers. Um, he is one of our best recruiters. Rob really heads up the entire state of Ohio when it comes to recruiting. Coach Jim Hamilton, um, he coordinates our special teams with Rob and works with our kickers and punters. Coach Ron Shields is our defensive coordinator. Uh, he kind of has his hands in a lot of different positions on defense. Uh, he'll work with our defensive line a little bit. He'll go back and work with our secondary a little bit. And he is the point person for the strength and conditioning for all of our football players and does an outstanding job. Coach Noah Bowl uh, is a young man that, that was here at the exception of the program um, as a student, uh, was a, an undergrad student in 2011 and volunteered, wanted to be a football coach, knew at a young age that's what he wanted to do with his career. Uh, he's now working on his master's degree. He is now our offensive line coach. He coordinates all of our run game. He coordinates our pass pro, really oversees the position coaches with the running backs and the H backs. And he's also our recruiting coordinator. Um, that's a huge role being our recruiting coordinator because you have to hold coaches accountable uh, to the recruiting philosophies that, that we hold true and the standard that we want to recruit by. Um, he's extremely organized and just does a really good job in that capacity. Hunter Coles works with our wide receivers. Uh, this will be his third year on staff. Um, he's, he's getting more and more confident and gaining more responsibility in that role. Aaron Bernard works with our running backs. This will be his third year on staff. He also coaches on special teams with our return men in the kicking game. Coach Dominic DeMillis is kind of a jack of all trades on our staff, does a lot of important stuff on game day in terms of signaling in defensive calls, getting the hot box ready for special teams. He works with our linebackers and coaches on all special teams. Coach Trey Walton works with our corners. Trey had a very decorated career at Grand Valley State. He was a cornerback himself. Uh, he's able to give some great nuggets to our DBs. And we'll talk about uh, later on in the talk a little bit of more of the impact that he's had on some of our players. Mitch Ozichuk was in his first year with us coaching the safeties. Mitch comes over from Adrian College. He had a great career as a safety over at Adrian College. Um, he's coached over in Japan. He's coached in Mexico. Uh, he's coached at a lot of different places and made a big impact on our staff this past fall in his first year coaching. Uh, Dr. Mike Dawson has been with the program since its inception, has done so much for our university, particularly our football program. Um, you know, we're never going to be able to repay Doc for what he's done. He's there every day. He's talking with our players. He's bonding with our players. Uh, if you have an opportunity to come see us play in O'Loughlin Stadium, you'll see him and his wife's name on our field, Dr. Mike and Lynn Dawson Field. Um, you know, everyone on this screen probably wouldn't have an opportunity to coach football at Siena Heights if it weren't for some of the things that Doc Dawson has done. Uh, just a great guy and a great friend. Got a phenomenal support staff. Uh, we've got three trainers that are as good as anybody in the business. Our head athletic trainer is Lori Robinette. Her, her two main assistants are Justin Logan and Leah Gomez. She also has an army of graduate assistants that are always on the field. You know, it's quite the undertaking uh, when you've got 130, 140 players on a field and you've got 15 coaches and you've got graduate assistants and it's really organized chaos at its finest. And Lori and her staff just do a phenomenal job. Uh, Kate uh, Dacher and Joni LeMay, I really can't say enough about these two ladies. Um, I don't know how, how anything could, could go on in our football program without these ladies. They work every home game on the weekend. They're the ticket takers. Um, if you're, you're a parent, you're, you want to get some tickets to come see your son, you probably had a, had a conversation with Kate to pick those tickets up. These two ladies organize our banquet every year. Um, if you had an opportunity to come to our banquet, you know it's done first class. They run all of our eligibility, which is really a, a full-time job in itself. So can't say enough about our managers of athletic operations. Kate Dazier sits over in, in our facility, in the Spencer facility, while Jody sits over in the field house. And they work hand in hand and, and just do a great job. Here's a shot of our, our 2019 Saints all of our coaches and our players. Um, we had a few unprecedented successes in 2019 that I wanna highlight and talk about a little bit. First one was, 
had an opportunity for the first time ever in the history of the program to play in the NAIA National Game of the Week. And I took this screenshot here off that live telecast. Um, this was in week seven of, of 2019. Um, we were the number 18 ranked team in the country. We traveled to Fort Wayne, Indiana to play then number six, the University of St. Francis. And all eyes were on us. It was the national game of the week. Um, it was a big deal. We knew Raiders were gonna be watching it. We knew it was gonna be televised. And the screenshot I took here uh, is the fourth quarter. You can see there's 9.05 left to go in the game. And our offense is getting ready to come back out onto the field. Um, this, this was very special to me because I'm somewhere in the middle of that huddle. And I distinctly remember looking around at some of our, our young men's faces and just saw the determination and the grit, knowing that they were very, very close to doing something that's never been done before. Um, went on the field up 10. We needed another score to kind of put the game away. We didn't get the score, but we were able to get up three, four first downs didn't give the ball back to St. Francis until there was about two minutes to go in the game, gave it back to them deep in their territory, and the game was pretty much at hand at that point. Uh, but this picture right here is something I'll, I'll keep with me for a while. Um, I just remember looking at those young men, seeing them strap up their helmets, and knowing that we were, we were really close. After that game, uh, going into week eight, we set a new unprecedented success. We achieved the highest national ranking in the history of the program uh, with the ranking of 14 in the country. Um, had, a, had a great season, had an opportunity at the last game of the season to play at home, and we played the number two ranked team in the country, uh, Marion University. Marion went on and ended up playing in the national championship game in 2019 and lost that game by one touchdown. Uh, we were just in a dogfight with Marion the last game of the year. Uh, it was a 7-7 football game late in the fourth quarter. There was a flurry of scores to end the game, and we came up short 21-7. Uh, one really cool thing we were able to do in this game, we were able to partner with our campus ministry program and the director, Tom Pashevitz. Um, I know that we have a lot of players in our program that are involved in campus ministry. And even if they're not involved in campus ministry, we do have a lot that, that volunteer at Share the Warmth and go down there and, and, and serve our homeless. So it was very near and dear to the hearts of a lot of our players that we were able to do this. And uh, through, through our partnership, we are able to bring in over 100 coats that we were able to donate to Share the Warmth. So it was something really cool we were able to do. And I can tell you, it was, it was chilly on November 16th. Um, if you had an opportunity to come to the game and donate a coat and are on the call, um, on behalf of myself and Tom Pashevitz, we just thank you very much for that. That was, that was really cool. So our last success, um, our, our, our school record, we finished ranked 20th in the country. Um, our previous record from the year prior was finishing 25th in the country. So moving from 25 to 20, we felt was a big step, a step in the right direction. Um, there is really a, an unyielding confidence right now amongst the people that are involved in our program, both coaches and both players. And I really saw that as we transitioned from fall into our exit meetings and saw all our guys come back and really attack their winter conditioning. You know, anytime a team has great success like we had, you're gonna have a lot of individual accolades. And we had several. A couple of them you can see right here. We had two NAIA All-Americans, both happened to be on the defensive side of the ball. Junior safety Trent Morrow was an NAIA All-American Honorable Mention, and senior cornerback Trayvon Claiborne was a first-team NAIA All-American. Uh, Trayvon was also nominated for the Cliff Harris Award. It's a really neat award. Uh, if you're not familiar with the award, it's given out to the best defensive football player, regardless of division, in the entire country. In the past five years, uh, Sienna Heights has had three players nominated for that award, and we actually had a player, Darius Price, win the award in 2017. So to have another player, particularly Trey, nominated for that award was really cool. Um, and to see him get first team All-American was very special. You know, both these guys are, were great football players, uh, great student athletes, but they're outstanding teammates. They're constantly trying to make their teammates better. They're constantly coaching up their teammates. Um, they're just great guys to be around. They're, they certainly are our kind of guys. Talk a little bit about our, our defense. 
Um, I just highlighted two guys from the two 2019 season that were all Americans, uh, did great things for our defense. Kind of the scary thing about our defense is neither of those two guys were voted our defensive MVP. So we've got some talent coming back on defense. Our defense last year was a, was a national power. We ended up being ranked third in the entire country, only giving up 12.1 points a game. Um, and you'll see we have a lot of great talent coming back on defense, a lot of really smart, a lot of really nasty football players, which is what you need on the defensive side of the ball. I'd like to talk a little bit about our defensive linemen. And again, um, Kate told me I had 30 minutes, so I'm going to highlight some of our guys that have just graduated here in May and a couple of guys that are going to come back that are going to be upperclassmen for us. All right, so on our defensive line, Drew Loria and Wyatt Gardaki would like to highlight them, both business administration majors, uh, both graduated with their degrees in May. Uh, both young men came in and were redshirted as freshmen, so they have another year to play. Both are enrolled in, in our MBA program. Both will be back in the fall playing for the Saints and working on their MBA. Nico Moroso and Jermaine Shumpert, two young men that, that were redshirted as well, just like Wyatt and Drew. Um, however, they're not quite finished up with their undergrad yet, so they're gonna come back and knock out those requirements in the fall and participate in football with the Saints. So we have four returning players that are older guys that will be their fifth year in the program on the defensive line. Um, these four guys also played a lot for us last year and were a big reason why we had so much success on defense. A um, Couple guys that are gonna be seniors. Vincent Walker has played a ton of football for us, made a lot of big plays for us last year. Um, he's going to be a senior in the classroom and a junior on the field for us, as is Santango Reynolds, who's a defensive tackle. Wanted to talk a little bit about Coach Leak, Malik Edwards. Um, he's had a very decorated career for us at Siena Heights on the defensive line and is coming back and, and coached our defensive line and helped mentor some of those guys um, this past fall. And he'll be back with us in 2020. Um, it's just so cool because I know guys like Drew, Wyatt, and Vinny all really looked up to Leak when he was a player. And now for him to come back and give back to the program has been a really special thing for me as, a, as the head coach to see. Moving back to the second level, our linebackers. Uh, Griffin Sobel graduated in May with a degree in education. And he'll be coming back and being a graduate assistant for our football program. Griff would like to explore a career in coaching and teaching. Um, so I'm really, really excited to get Griff on board. I still remember the day when I was recruiting Griff and now he's gonna be working for me in the capacity of a GA. So that's kind of neat. Uh, Logan Smith is a part of our first graduating class of engineers uh, with a focus on mechanical engineering, played a lot of football for us, made a lot of plays for us, was an all conference player for us. Joel Hilliard graduated in May with his degree in sport management, and he'll be back to work on his master's degree, even though I don't believe he's got any years of eligibility left. Nick Stallworth, uh, moving down to the bottom here. These are all returning players now. Nick Stallworth will be a senior for us. Um, he just recently won the Thomas Emmett Award, which is a Siena Heights Award given out to the best junior student athlete. It's given out to a male and a female recipient and Nick Stallworth was the male recipient. Um, has had an awesome three-year career so far. Looking forward to see how he caps off his senior year. Cole Merlin was our starting Mike linebacker, was only a sophomore last year, all right? And the reason I wanted to, to put him up here, even though he's a sophomore, is he was that young man that was voted our defensive MVP last year, um, even though we did have those two All-Americans. Cole led our entire conference in tackles last year. So really looking forward to having Cole back. Daniil Lowe and Hayden Sluter are guys that are going to be juniors uh, on the playing field, seniors in the classroom. Both have played a lot of football for us in situational roles. With the graduation of Griffin, Logan, and Joe, Daniil and Hayden are going to have a tremendous opportunity to really seize the moment and jump into one of those roles. So I know both those guys, all these guys here are working their tails off and really looking forward to Daniil and Hayden. Um, at the linebacker position, we have several freshmen, several sophomores, as in the D-line, that, that can make an impact for us in the fall. Um, again, uh, due to some time restrictions, uh, I'm going to highlight the upperclassmen. Our defensive backs, um, we had one senior last year. One guy will be graduating, Trayvon Claiborne. 
Uh, he's leaving and graduated in May with his degree in sports management. Trent Morrow, who talked about earlier, was our honorable mention All-American safety for us. He'll be a senior next year. Marquise Goodman plays cornerback for us, and he'll be a senior next year. If you had an opportunity to see our home opener last year against Olivet Nazarene, it came down to the wire. And Olivet Nazarene ran a reverse pass for a two-point conversion at the end of the game that would have won the game for them. And Marquise had a huge play, uh, broke up that pass to win us that game. Um, really looking forward to having Marquise back for his senior year. Gabe Callery has been a two-year starter at free safety for us. He'll be coming back as a biology major in his junior year um, from an eligibility standpoint, um, but a senior in the classroom. And Marquise Robinson, criminal justice major, he'll be coming back for his senior year. He's played a lot of different positions for us on the defensive backfield. He's on all special teams. Uh, he's just a phenomenal leader for us, holds guys accountable. Um, he's not one of the tallest guys on our team, but when he talks, people listen. So really excited to have these upperclassmen coming back. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, this defensive back position might be the most loaded with talent on our team. We've got a ton of talent in our freshman and sophomore class. Um, but again, just wanted to highlight the upperclassmen. Now transitioning a little bit over into our offense. Um, you're going to see as we talk about our positions individually, we were a very young football team on offense last year. We've got a lot of guys coming back on offense. Um, I really saw a, a new level of grit out of our offense in this winter conditioning. A new layer of toughness was developed by our offense, um, something that we certainly needed and something that was really, really nice to see. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we go through. I know that players on offense have continued to stay connected with each other, you know, being, uh, being working remotely with Zoom meetings and going through our install. Um, so that's going to pay dividends for us once we're able to get back together. We had one senior in the offensive line. You know, we were extremely young, like I said. Our senior uh, offensive lineman was Stanley Fink. He played center for us, was a two-year starter. Not only was he just our center, our best offensive lineman, uh, but he was really the, the heart and soul of our leadership on the offensive side of the ball last year. Just a vocal leader, super intelligent young man, graduated in May with a, a degree in computer information systems. Um, just to give you a little, little inkling into the level of commitment of this young man. Uh, last summer, he had an internship at Braceway right here in, in town, and he'd get up and work out every morning at 6 a.m. in the Spencer facility, you know. Sometimes I, I had to let him in and I didn't want to be up there at 6 a.m., but Stan's commitment really drove me as well. Um, he'd work out every morning, he'd shower there at the facility, and he'd be over at his internship at 7.30 in the morning. And he did that every day in the summer, every day. He had a great senior year, was an all-conference player, and, and really showed the younger guys how to be a college football player. Uh, so just a phenomenal job by Stan. We're certainly very excited. We have every other offensive lineman coming back on our football team. Quarterbacks. We do not have any quarterbacks graduating. Uh, Tyler Nett will we be a returning starter for us. Tyler's played a lot of football for us um, over the past couple of years. He's going to be a senior in the classroom, but a junior on the playing field. So he would have an opportunity to come back for that fifth year, like a lot of our guys have been doing, um, but has really been a great leader and a great teacher to the younger guys you see on the screen. Um, the younger guys you see, Hayden Lehman, Justin McNown, Brendan Zapikas, are all super talented young men. All of them were freshmen for us in 2019, um, have the physical ability to make every throw, do everything on the football field, are just growing in the mental capacity of the game. And all of them want it, all of them are very attentive, and they're a joy to work with. Really looking for some big things out of our cues here in the fall. Our H-backs. We graduated two awesome, awesome young men at the H-back position. First one was Grant McNally. He graduated in May with a business administration major. Grant is a, a weight room warrior, super strong guy. Um, he's going to wants to go into business for himself, um, work in a, a sports performance uh, uh, training capacity. He's already started that. And if he can train anyone to be as strong as him, uh, it's going to be a very, very lucrative business. Let me tell you, the guy is, is very strong. He was also our long snapper. 
um, which is a, a huge thing. You know, no one really recognizes the long snapper until they snap one over somebody's head. Um, and Grant did a phenomenal job, started that capacity for three years for us. Dewan Smith might be one of the smartest young men I've ever met when coaching college football. A uh, young man is a double major in mechanical engineering and mathematics, super bright, super intelligent, graduated in May. I know he's gonna go on and do some really big things with that Siena Heights degree. A couple of young men that are gonna be seniors for us, Pianki Abdul-Hakim and George Hill will both be seniors. Both have played some football for us. Both had an awesome winter conditioning and a pretty good spring for what we were able to do. So excited to have those guys back in the fall. Our running backs. Slide looks a little different here for a reason. We don't have any running backs that we're graduating and we have no running backs that are gonna be seniors. We've got five running backs right now on our roster and we really believe that all five can, can get the job done for us. The pictures you see here left to right are Ethan Lopresto. He was a freshman for us in the fall. Caleb Jefferson is a sophomore. He's in the middle. And Jared Jordan, uh, Jr. He will be a redshirt junior uh, next fall. Andre Chenault was another freshman along with Logan Murphy. All did a great job running the ball for us. Um, all had games where, where they were the go-to guy. And we need five running backs. We like to run the ball. We feel like we got a pretty healthy stable back there where we can, we can be physical running the ball against teams. Our wide receivers. So here you're, you're seeing a little more upperclassmen, but don't let the slide fool you. Let me talk a little bit more about these guys. Nick Pagano, just graduated in May with a double major in finance and economics. He graduated early. He is only a junior in the classroom and already has his bachelor's degree. So he's gonna be coming back for, to work on his MBA in the fall. He has two years of eligibility left and his goal is to knock out that MBA. Very, very intelligent young man. So happy to have Nick back. Jalen Young graduated early. He actually finished up his bachelor's degree requirements in December and then spent the second semester taking classes towards his MBA. And he wants to finish his MBA at Siena Heights. So we're excited to see Jalen back on campus. He won't be able to suit up, uh, but it's always great seeing Jay. Austin Kreider graduated in May in sports management. He's gonna pursue a career in, in golf, golf course management. He had an internship at a five-star resort golf course down in Florida. And uh, if you've ever been out on the links with Austin, he can really, he can really rip it. Uh, so Austin, looking for big things from him. Gerald King graduated in May with a sport management degree. He's gonna come back for that fifth year. He was another young man that was redshirted. So very happy to get Gerald back. He was our leading receiver last year. He did his internship with Sound Mind, Sound Body, which is a national recruiting service. Um, he wants to pursue a career in coaching. Um, so he'll be working on his MBA with Nick Pagano here in the fall. Justin Carabino, super intelligent young man, majored in chemical engineering. Um, I think he had one B in his entire career, just does a phenomenal job. Just an awesome, awesome guy to be around. Tim Brown and Elantre Austin, are, will both be seniors next year for us. Both have played a lot of football for us and we're looking for big things out of them. Really, really excited to have this, this much veterans coming back at the wide receiver position. You know, you got Pagano, Gerald King, Tim Brown and Elantre combined with some super dynamic younger guys that are coming up. We should be in a position where we can throw the ball most, much more efficiently than we ever have. And last but certainly not least are our kickers and our punters. Anthony Secchi and Alec Thielen both did the, the kicking off and the scoring for us, the PATs and the field goals, while Caleb Meester was our punter. Caleb was also an all-conference punter. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier the job that Coach Thornblade and Coach Hamilton do with our special teams. Uh, we really were able to, to win the special teams game in virtually all of our games last year. Really control field position. And when we had an opportunity to knock it through the uprights, we were able to do that. So our spring football was obviously very unique this year. Uh, one thing that's always really cool about spring football is when we come back from, from Christmas break, it's a new team. 
You know, there, there's guys that are there in the weight room. There's guys that are there in the team meeting. There's guys in the position meetings, um, you know, that are new faces. There's some guys from the fall that, that aren't there anymore. So you really have an opportunity to see what this team is going to do. You see new leaders emerge. You see position battles take place. Um, the way that we kind of work our spring football, the way that I design it on, on, on purpose, I, I put certain guys in positions where they are going to fail together. And they're going to fail no matter how hard they try, no matter what they do. I'm going to tweak it so you're going to, you're going to be unsuccessful. And then there's going to be different tweaks to the way we do things in spring football where you're going to win together. Um, there's going to be times when things are going to be so hard, you're going to have to just get creative and find a way to overcome some adversity to win. Um, and that's one thing that, that we were able to still do in the winter through our winter conditioning. We're able to get in a, a couple spring practices in the field house and one out on the field. So we were able to put ourselves in a couple of those situations. And I was able to really see some new leaders emerge, which was outstanding. So when we, we broke in, in second, third week of March, um, we had to continue to find ways to overcome adversity together. We weren't gonna stop. And I was so proud of our, our players and our coaches. No one just stopped. No one just said, okay, you know, we're off. I'm just going to stop this football thing. Everyone was hungry for more football. Everyone wanted to stay engaged. Everyone wanted to stay connected, um, even though we weren't together. And we've been able to do that. Um, our staff has been having Zoom meetings, um, video conferencing our players. Uh, we've been sending each other videos of our workouts. Uh, we've been staying connected. Um, We've been staying connected. We've been working out physically and academically. I was just super proud of our football team. It wasn't easy for a lot of guys to transition from from face to face learning and go to, to strictly online learning. Um, when, when that first broke, my phone was ringing off the hook, text message, phone calls from players that had some legitimate concerns about how this whole remote learning was going to go. Um, it's so cool being able to coach football, being involved in athletics, um, and, and taking that experience that you had of overcoming some adversity on the football field and then applying it to school. And taking that adversity you overcome maybe on the football field or in the weight room and applying it to your personal relationships uh, with your friends and family or maybe with your significant other. Um, it's just so cool. And, and our guys were able to do that. They're able to take what they're able to do athletically and apply that right here academically. And I couldn't be more proud of them. Uh, we had 14 student athletes that had 4.0s, 24 student athletes between 3.5 and 3.9, and another 25 with a 3.0 to a 3.4. So just super proud of our guys finding a way to get it done. And it's just so important that, that we're able to do that as men as we continue to grow. Our team average GPA uh, was just shy of a 3.0. The goal of our program is to be over a 3.0 GPA. Uh, so we're certainly not satisfied with the 2.94 and uh, we're excited to get back to it because we know we can finish with over that 3.0. Our 2020 class, uh, our staff couldn't be more excited about. On February 5th on signing day, um, we signed 44 young men to join our football program. Um, I'd love to sit here and tell you about it, all 44 individually, but co as a collective group, this is what you can expect out of these guys. Very smart group. The average GPA of these 44 young men was a 3.2. Um, so they can get it done in the classroom. They're leaders. 29 of the 44 were captains of their high school football team. They know how to lead. They know that they got to be a little uncomfortable in order to make others comfortable. And just really excited that that we have so many good leaders joining our team. They got a will to win, and this is important. Uh, in our recruiting process, Coach Bull makes sure that we're targeting guys that come from winning football programs, guys that know they got to do that extra lift or they got to do that extra walkthrough or they got to do that extra to be successful. 34 of 44 played in the playoffs as a senior. So we think we're getting those guys from those committed programs. OKGs is kind of a term that we use in our recruiting meetings, our staff uses, or they are kind of guys. And the really cool thing about being a college football coach is we get to go out and, and really handpick the, the young men that we'd like to have join our football team. 
and it's not so much evaluating their, their highlight tape or evaluating their transcript. It's having conversations with them. It's finding out about their families. It's finding out the morals, um, you know, and the values that have been instilled in them. And we want to know those things. And we want to determine if you're our kind of guy. And we really think we've got 44 OKGs coming in, guys that we really want to be around, guys that we know are going to fit the culture of our other returning players, and the transition will be very seamless for these young men. So we're excited as heck to have these guys come to campus, to start really working with them, our staff, and then to you know, acclimate them to the rest of our team. Here's a shot of our schedule. Um, we are going to be road warriors in the fall. Uh, we are scheduled for six away games and four home. Um, our first get two games on the road, September 5th and September 12th, are going to be in Illinois. And then we're back home on September 19th against St. Ambrose, a team out of Iowa. Homecoming, a uh, big rivalry on homecoming is October 3rd at home against Concordia. Two teams here in Michigan. Um, in the mid states. So that should be a doozy right there. We've played two extremely close, hard hitting football games with Concordia the past two years. We're back home again on October 17th. And then our final home game might be a little chilly for the for you Saints fans, St. Francis on November 7th. So really would love to have everyone come out to this beautiful field here, Doc, Doc uh, Mike and Lynn Dawson Field, O'Loughlin Stadium. Um, come out and cheer on your Saints to a victory. Um, should be a fun and very exciting time here in the fall. Um, again, we just want to thank the opportunity to, to uh, marketing Doug and Liesl and Kate and Sarah for giving me the opportunity to talk. And at this time, I'm going to pass it back over to Kate. Oh my gosh, coach. Thanks so much. That was great. We have used up all of our time, um, but we still have everybody hanging out. So uh, Sarah, you've been looking at the questions as they came in and you're ready to share with Coach. Sarah, what questions do Saints ha fans have for Coach Cone? Absolutely. Well, I want to echo that. Thank you so much, Matt. It's been fun to listen to some sports and see some pictures, especially uh, during this time where we're kind of craving some sports. So I got my uh, Siena Heights Athletic shirt on. Ready to rock and roll with some questions here with you. And of course, I'm sure this comes as no surprise. Um, we have a couple questions in the chat. Uh, really wanting to know, do you have any updates on this upcoming season? Uh, what does it look like to play football in the fall? Have you, do you have anything you can share with us as far as fans coming in or schedule um, besides just what, what you originally planned, but with this pandemic, what's, what's, on, the, what's on the radar? What can we expect? Certainly, and, and I know that's on, on everyone's minds right now. Um, I know one thing is that the number one thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that everybody's safe. And if, if we're going to play football, we're going to do it safely uh, to the best of our abilities. That's first and foremost. Um, and so we're going to get that done. And, and right now, as a head coach, that's, that's what I'm spending a lot of my time doing. Um, interacting with other coaches in our league, interacting with other coaches across uh, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three here in the state of Michigan, um, and just finding out what those protocols are going to be. Um, what what do we have to do uh, to have a football season? You know, we're, we're moving forward right now, staying very optimistic, uh, saying, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna play this schedule that I just presented in front of you." Um, we have our our league meeting coming up here uh, at the end of June. Um, we're we're going to, you know, come together collectively as a group of coaches and share all this information on protocols that are going to be in place in terms of practices, meetings, um, you know, things of that nature. Um, but we're going to stay optimistic and uh, we're going to stay having our Zoom meetings. We're going to stay talking football. And it, it, it really has kind of been a breath of fresh air, Sarah. You know, you mentioned you're wearing your, your shoe athletic shirt and um, get to talk some sports and see some images of sports. And I really found that for our, our young men, our student athletes, um, and even our coaches, you know, they, I'm getting texts, I'm getting phone calls, wanting to talk some football, I'm looking at tape and, and just to get back into football and have those conversations and, and resume our, our, our life, our normal life that we know. So um, I guess to fully answer the question, we're staying optimistic. Um, we're, we're putting the protocols in place and we're preparing for, for what our season is going to look like when the time comes. 
Well, and I'm sure uh, there's there's no surprise on anyone for that answer. And I'm sure we're all crossing our fingers that that can happen. But it's good to know that uh, the university, that the team, the athletic department's thinking about the, the athlete's safety. And uh, that's, of course, top of mind. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can, we can all see some football this fall. Um, and we'll just continue to hope things go in the right direction. One of the other questions that came in had to do with um, something you said, and I'm paraphrasing this person, but you said that the, the team has shown a lot of confidence, especially coming off of this big uh, season for you and top ranking that you've um, ever received and some of those things. How do you keep the guys motivated? How do you, how do you, and so maybe this is coming from a coach, but how do you not let them just settle and assume that they're gonna be in that same position again? That's a great question, and, and that is a, is a huge challenge, you know, for any coach. And the way that we try to do it is we always try to, to – we see the big picture, but we always talk about and we always fo focus on the small picture. No one ever talks about a ranking. No one ever talks about a stat. I mean, that's stuff that's, that's never brought up. Um, the, the only thing that, that our players are thinking about right now um, is, hey, what's going to go on practice one? Okay, we're done with practice one. Okay, now what do we got to do in our next meeting? And, and so everything is just right in front of you. You know, we have a, a schedule board that hangs in our locker room with our, our schedule for the fall. And it's by design that there's only one team on there at a time. And that's the team that we're playing that week. So we're not looking forward to anything. Uh, we're not reading our own news clippings. We're focused on the task at hand and that's getting ourselves better. And that's really been the approach every day uh, consistently for the past couple years. And since everyone's kind of really bought into the mindset, we're starting to see the, the fruits of our labor a little bit. So for us to switch things up or for us to start thinking about something else or, or do things different um, would be foolish for us to do at this point. That's so great to hear just taking you know, one, one day, one practice, one, one game at a time. I know that's tough to do, especially when you're the, the national you know, game of the week and things like that, but it's, it's good to hear that, that your, your guys have bought into that. Another question we have just has to do with uh, just maybe a personal question for you. What what has been your favorite position to coach? Oh wow! Okay, um, I've, I've I've coached a lot just at Siena Heights, um, but this past uh, winter was really cool for me. Um, after the season, I transitioned over from uh, working with our run game and working with our H backs a little bit to working with our quarterbacks. And um, I haven't had an opportunity to coach quarterbacks since um, I coached at my alma mater, University of Indianapolis. I've never coached the, the quarterbacks at Siena Heights. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a position that, that I played as a former player. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, the quarterbacks we have on the team are, are awesome guys. Um, they're super committed to their craft. They're hardworking. And it's been really fun just to share some of uh, so my experiences with them playing the game and help them grow in that position. So um, I'm, it's a very biased answer, but I'm gonna have to say quarterback. Well, and I knew that that was your position. So I was, I was wondering if you were gonna, you were gonna lean that way. Uh, we have another question and I don't know if this is for, from an incoming um, student or maybe somebody who's looking at Siena Heights, but who should people contact if they're on today? They like what they saw. Um, how do they get a hold of somebody on the, the football uh, coaches? How do they get on the radar of the football coaches? And that's a great play? question. That, that's a great question. And, and that's what we're doing right now. Our day to days as coaches are consistent of obviously we're working on protocols and I've kind of take the, the brunt of that as the head coach. Um, but our entire staff is constantly evaluating film, evaluating transcripts, um, entering dialogue with prospects to determine if they're going to be our kind of guy. Um, so, so my advice would be reach out to send me an email, reach out to one of our staff on Twitter. All of our, our staff is on social media. Um, you know, send us a, a professional email or, or DM name. Um, transcript, where you're from. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We'd love to, to learn more about you. Can you uh, shout out, maybe Doug just did for us, but what is that email? Which, what email yeah. should they reach out to? So, so, so if, you, if you want to see more information on our program and, and read more in-depth bios of our, our staff, you just go to shoesaints.com. Um, if you go to shoesaints.com, you go to football, click football, you're going to have all of our staff's emails are up there. 
Um, if you're on Twitter, if you're a student athlete on Twitter, which I highly recommend being on Twitter, if, if you're trying to get recruited, um, just type in Matt Cohn, type in Rob Thornblade, type in anyone on our staff. They'll come up, give us a follow. We'll follow you back and we can start, you know, having some conversation that way, you know, and, and get this, get the mobile number and then, and then reach out. So a lot of ways to, to reach out to us and get in contact with us. That's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. And Doug, if anyone's not looking at the chats, please look at the chats because Doug Goodnow has done a great job of uh, shouting out some some of the guys for next season, but then also put up SHU, that's S-H-U, um, saints.com. And that way, if you have any questions, you will find out exactly how to get a hold of coaches and, and definitely be connected to any of the Saints social media channels. I just had one more question pop in. What right. do you look for in the starter? How does someone catch your attention? Obviously, all the guys are working hard this offseason. Um, you know, you hope, obviously, as any coach that they're going to be buying for, for a starting position. What do you look for? What stands out to you as a coach when you're, when you're selecting that starting lineup? That's, a, that's an awesome question. And uh, I'm going to use a term that I took from, from one of my mentors, Coach Jim Lyle. And I know he took this from his former coach, Bo Schembechler. Um, we, say, we say as coaches, we have an expectation for the position. Um, so we, we have, kind of have to evaluate um, with an unbiased when we look at who's going to go into the game. Because, you know, we, we love all of our players. I mean, I have a, I have a strong love for, for a lot of the players on our football team, but we can't determine – um, who who plays based on how much we like a guy or how much we care for a guy. It has to be totally merit-based. Um, so we're going to do a lot of film evaluation. We go through uh, two-hour practice, and every rep that a student athlete will take on the football field is filmed from a wide shot and a tight shot. So we're really leaving no stone unturned um, as we evaluate and determine who's going to be the best for that position. Um, and then we leave it up to our staff to – to sit down with our student athletes and say, hey, 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 Matt Cohn, I, you see what you did right here on tape? Well, you know, the expectation for the position is for, for this to happen. Um, so right here, you know, you were short of the expectation. Here, you, you know, you went above and beyond the expectation. And so um, that's the way our staff operates. Um, we're, we're open door policy. If, if ever a student athlete on our team has a question about where he is on the depth chart, um, come on in. Let's have a conversation about it. Let's turn on the tape. Let's see exactly where you are. And more importantly, let's communicate what needs to happen in order for you to be where you want to be. And that has to happen between player and coach. Absolutely. I'm sure there's a, if anybody's on, I'm sure that they love to hear that. It's always nice to have an honest evaluation from a coach, even if it's sometimes not what you want to hear, at least <laughs> let you know where you need to go. Absolutely. Uh, Hey, one of the questions that came in, I don't know if this has been a conversation in your, um, you know, you said you, the, the conference was meeting. If for some reason, and I'm going to knock on wood for you, Coach, over here, but if for some reason uh, the season can't be played, has there been any talk about giving players back uh, that eligibility year? Would you be able to speak to that at all? Or if not, that's sure. okay too? Well, I know that there's a, there's a lot of things going on at the national level at the NAIA. And I know that's one of the topics that's been brought up. Um, I know that, that from talking with the coaches in our league, um, we're going to do everything we can to play football. Um, is that going to be a full league schedule? We hope. It potentially may not be a full league schedule. You know, there's going to be a lot of different options that have been thrown out. Um, we could look at a, a delayed start to the season. It could look at a shortened uh, season. It could look at as a season that's uh, uh, geographically located, if that makes sense, where, you know, our, our Michigan schools play each other, our Indiana schools play each other, our Illinois schools play each other. Um, there's been a lot of conversations that have been taking place. And in, in my opinion, for where we are right now, um, you know, in, on May 21st, this is exactly what needs to be taking place. Um, not necessarily decisions, but conversations, proposals, um, ideas. And a lot of those are being done right now, um, starting with, with what's going on at Siena Heights. Um, I mean, our, our leadership has done an outstanding job um, from Sister Peg to our Dean for Students, Michael Orlando, to our Athletic Director, Sue Silderbeck. I mean, there is a lot of dialogue taking place right now on our campus on how um, we're going to be safe and, and bring our students back and, and have a fall athletics. 
And that's, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I'm sure it, you know, alleviates some of the concern. And to, to answer that person's question, again, we don't know what would happen, um, right. but they did give the eligibility back for the spring sports that were canceled. So, you know, we'd hope that if, if something were to have happened like that, that that would, that would be the, the same. And I think Doug put that in the chat as well. Yeah. Um, uh, what, it looks like somebody said, what age uh, slash high school, high school grade do you start looking at players? When, when would be a time that a, a school like Sian Heights, size of Sian Heights, um, would, would start to look at a player? We, for our process, we're going to start looking at you when you're a junior in high school. Um, we're going to look at your junior tape, and then we're going to start engaging you right around this time, the summer going into your senior year. Um, that's when we're gonna kind of take you through our process, when we kind of evaluate your film, evaluate you physically as a football player, evaluate your transcript, um, you know, as a student, and then, you know, starting to, starting to find out more about you, starting to find out more about your values and, and what you're about. Um, and then, you know, it, do we, after we've determined that, are we gonna move on and, and take a look at your senior tape? Or was there a red flag somewhere where we're not going to move on and take it your senior tape? So um, we're going to start that process right when they're a junior. Okay. And how do you determine, you mentioned a couple guys were red shirted. What does that, yeah. what does that look like? How do we determine who is red shirted? Um, that's a great, on that. yeah, that's a great question. Um, that's one that I, that I get quite a bit from parents. Um, really easy answer. If you're the best player to help us win the game at any of the positions, then you're going to play in that game and you're going to try and help the team win. Um, if you're not, then, then you're, then you're not going to play in the game. And then at the end of the season, um, if you did not play in a single contest, you're granted a red shirt. Um, I work it that way. I don't want to name the red shirts at the beginning of the year. I want every practice to be competitive. I want everyone going out there to try and win a spot on every rep they take. Um, and I just think it makes everyone better when you go out with that mindset, as opposed to, well, I'm redshirted, I'm not going to play Saturday, so here I am, you know, um, and it's made for some very, very competitive practices. I bet, yeah, that, I learned something new today, I didn't realize that's how you did it, but I, I agree with you, I bet, you know, people are going after spots every day, every practice, so that's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, this could be a good, a good one to end on, we have, uh, we're definitely over, so thanks for sticking with us. We had about uh, over 60 people at one point on here, uh, but people are still here, so we're going to ask this one. The last one, um, question of the day is, could you tell a Doc Dawson story? And um, maybe it's fitting to end because I'm sure, uh, you know, you mentioned he's done so much for the program, for the university. I think Doc's a board member. Actually, I know Doc's a board member, so uh, is there any uh, Doc Dawson story you can share having with them as long as you have oh man several several doc dawson stories um but i'll tell the most recent um so this past fall um we're in fall camp and we're finishing up a practice by doing a competitive scrimmage 11 on 11 drill uh, it's very competitive and usually during those drills um, doc stands all the way on the home side and he looks right down the line of scrimmage he carries a little yellow handkerchief and if any of his defensive linemen line off offsides, he's going to throw the yellow handkerchief and he's going to yell out to me, hey, coach, they're offsides. All right, so that's, that's Doc's job right there whenever we're in 11 on 11, and he does an awesome job of it. Well, uh, we had a play that carried over onto that sideline um, and had a young man get tackled out of bounds, and Doc unfortunately couldn't, couldn't get out of the way quick enough and uh, suffered a pretty serious injury, a uh, fractured hip. And uh, as, a, as a more seasoned gentleman, that's a tough injury to sustain. Um, but this guy, he, he, honest to gosh, is the toughest guy I've ever met. Um, a bunch of players just picked him up, put him in the car, took him to the hospital. He had surgery, um, um, recovered from that hip. And now um, I saw him on his 75th birthday. We Zoomed him on his 75th birthday a couple weeks ago. And he's, uh, he's got a 150-pound St. Bernard that he's playing with in the video. So he's back at it at full force. Um, just uh, one tough son of a gun. Awesome. Well, that's what you look for in a coach. So I'm, I'm glad. And it's good to hear those stories. Thank you so much to everyone who joined us tonight, especially to Coach Cohn 
for kicking off our Sienna Shares and we definitely hope to have many more of these in a range of different topics, but love talking sports with you today, coach. And thank you so much for putting, putting us inside the huddle and giving us a little insight into Saints football. Well, thank you. Yeah. Sarah. I want to echo what Sarah, Sarah just said. Oh my gosh, Matt, this has been so great. Um, thank you so much for volunteering <laughs> to join <laughs> I totally appreciate it. Sarah, thank you for stepping up as moderator. Doug, I love the comments you've added. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. It's been a great collaboration. I hope all our Saints fans have enjoyed tuning in tonight. And uh, everybody stay safe out there, okay? Thanks for joining. Thank Go you. Saints.